So as you recall from the previous videos, enzyme catalyze reaction by decreasing the activation energy needed to convert the substrate into a product. In other words, enzymes accelerate the reaction. And so because enzymes do not affect the equilibrium of the reaction, if you want to study enzyme kinetics, you need to measure reaction velocity. How can you measure reaction velocity? If we go back to our old example about the beta-galactosidase, beta-galactosidase hydrolyze a beta-galactoside to form galactose and an R group. So we have substrate and products. We can use that to define the velocity of a reaction. The velocity of a reaction is either the amount of product that is formed per unit of time or the amount of substrate that is uh, consumed per unit of time. So now that we know how to define the velocity, we have to try to figure out how we can measure, for example, the production of a product over time. With beta-galactosidase, we are lucky because this enzyme catalyzes the conversion of ONPG into galactose and ONP. And while ONPG is colorless, ONP is yellow. So we can have a very simple colorimetric assay that we can use to measure the velocity of the reaction. How is the color related to the amount of ONP? In the lab, we have an instrument called a spectrophotometer that can measure the intensity of a color in a reaction. So if we start our experiment with a given amount of substrate and a given amount of enzyme, we can place the uh, tube that contains the reaction in the spectrophotometer and measure over time the amount of yellow color that is produced during the reaction. As the reaction proceed, there will be formation of more and more product, ONP, and the color will become yellower and yellower. By measuring the intensity of the yellow color, what we can do, in fact, is measure how much product has been formed during the reaction. And that can be used as a direct correlation between the intensity of the color, the yellow color, as well as the concentration of product. Let's graph now uh, or plot the concentration of product that is formed, or the yellow color, the intensity of the yellow color, as a function of the time. What we get is an hyperbolic curve. And you remember that the velocity of the reaction is the amount of product formed over time. Graphically, this velocity represents, in fact, the slope of the tangent at any point along the curve. And an interesting observation that we can make from the curve is that as the reaction proceeds, the slope decreases, so the velocity decreases. And that makes a lot of sense because we, if we know how a reaction works, we have started with a constant concentration of substrate. So over time, the substrate gets depleted and the reaction will slow down. But if we focus on the early phase of the reaction, we can see from the graph, the hyperbolic curve, that the first part is almost linear, which means that the slope of the tangent will be constant for, let's say, 60 seconds. And that gives us a way to uh, determine a parameter that will characterize the enzyme. That will be the velocity at the beginning of the reaction, and that is what we call V0, or initial velocity. And from now on, when we discuss kinetics and velocity of reaction, we will refer to the initial velocity. Now, in this experiment, what we did was to take one concentration of substrate and one concentration of enzyme. Imagine that we do the same set of experiments, keeping the enzyme concentration constant, but increasing the concentration of substrate. For each concentration of substrate, we can measure V0 and then plot V0 as a function of the concentration of substrate. What we see on the graph is that when the concentration of substrate is relatively low, as the concentration of substrate increases, V0 increases as well. But then after some time, 
we have a situation where any increase of the concentration of substrate does not affect significantly the initial velocity. And once again, if we understand how an enzyme works, it's very easy to figure out why this, uh, uh, this initial velocity reaches a plateau. When an enzyme reacts with a substrate, it forms an enzyme-substrate complex. If the concentration of enzyme is maintained consta constant, as we increase the concentration of substrate, the enzyme becomes the limiting factor. All the enzyme is engaged into an enzyme-substrate complex, and any addition of substrate will not change the velocity of the reaction and will not change the initial velocity. So now we, we can define this maximum initial velocity that we call Vmax. And the Vmax of the reaction is a characteristic feature of our enzyme. And in the next video, we'll see how Vmax and another characteristic feature of an enzyme called Km can be used to study enzyme kinetics.